Ladies and gentlemen, honorable ministers, excellencies, thank you very much for remaining with us. This has been a tremendous four days, and we're very happy uh, to reach the concluding session, the closing session, and I will leave the introduction of the speakers uh, to a member of the board of the Canadian Council on Africa, Mr. Pierre Boivin from Mécarté Tétro. We can really tell when we look at the room now, we've downsized a little bit who are the real tough ones. <laughs> the last ones to leave the party are probably always the ones people are here. Uh, excellencies, ministers, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm to be room. Uh, to me, there's no better demonstration of the Canadian government's commitment to Africa than to have two of their most important ministers both come today to address this audience. So you're about to have the second part of an important one-two punch that, that, that uh, Mr. Payazzi will be later. Um, Mr. Payazzi was first elected to the House of Commons on January 23rd, 2006 as the Member of Parliament for the writing of Higatsi Lega. He was appointed Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of National Resources on February 7, 2006, and subsequently appointed to the Cabinet as Secretary of State for Agriculture on January 2007. On June 25, 2008, he was appointed Minister of Public Works and Government Services, while remaining Secretary of State, and in October 2008, was elected MP for Migasi Dea for a second term. On October 30th, 2008, he was appointed Minister of Public Works and Government Services, Minister Responsible for the Montreal Region, and Prime Minister's Quebec Political Lieutenant. On January 29, 2010, he was appointed Minister of Natural Resources, all the while keeping his responsibilities as Quebec Lieutenant as Prime Minister and Minister Responsible for Montreal. On May 2nd, 2011, voters from Bigan Sikia sent Mr. Payazi to the House of Commons for a third term. On May 18, 2011, he became Minister of Industry and Minister of State for Agriculture. On July 15, 2013, he became Minister of International Development and National Freedom. Mr. Payazi is a lawyer, which is also very positive. And he studied law and practiced corporate law for a number of years in his hometown of Tetford Mines. Very active on his community, in his community and at the grassroots level. He has been involved in various organizations including the Amyanka Chapter of the Management Club of Canada, the Rotary Club, and the Amyanka Chamber of Commerce and Industry. There is no doubt that Christian Parizzi is deeply committed to achieving a higher profile for his region and ensuring its advancement and development. Christian Parazzi is married to Julie Auberge and the proud father of three children, Charles, Gilbert, and Sophie. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, the right honorable Mr. Christian Parazzi.
You have likely heard me say that Africa's development is not only an important economic growth story, it is also a social development story. It's about jobs, better education and training. It's about greater access to health care services for mothers and children, a Canadian priority. And it's about increased revenues and transparency so everyone can reap the rewards. As captains of industry and leaders in government and academia, this is our challenge. To remember the development perspective, to create jobs and generate revenues that can be reinvested in the basic services people need. And to not only improve a community while companies are doing business there, but to maximize and maintain the gains long after companies have left. There are various paths to prosperity. As minister, I am focused on the law, but that it is only one piece of the puzzle, and it can stand alone. The other pieces are the rule of law, respect for human rights and trade. The fact that my colleague had fast spoke to you earlier today, as I just alluded, is a prime example of that. Canada's Global Markets Action Plan and our robust development agenda are two sides of the same coin. La réduction, mon collègue, est face aujourd'hui plutôt est une excellente illustration de cette réalité. Les plans d'action sur les marchés mondiaux du Canada et notre solide plan de développement forment de nous. Prenons l'Afrique comme exemple. Il y a 20 ans, une Afrique prospère était presque inimaginable, sauf pour quelques visionnaires. Aujourd'hui, pourtant, l'Afrique déborde de l'espoir. Beaucoup d'observateurs s'accordent à dire que l'Afrique est un continent qui progresse. Et je dis pour ma part que l'Afrique est en pleine croissance. En partie parce que de nombreux croissants économies africaines se tournent vers le commerce et l'investissement. Today, Africa is filled with hope. Many commentators say Africa is on the rise. I say Africa has risen, in part because more and more Africans come. In part because more and more African economies are embracing trade and, inv and investment and seeing it as an engine for growth, job creation, and poverty reduction. We are seeing the creation of regional hubs of trade and investment in countries such as South Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, Tanzania, and Senegal. And Canada is proud to be part of this success. We understand the tremendous economic opportunities that exist in Africa, partially because they mirror our own. Canada has a long history of harnessing natural resources for economic growth. Our minerals, metals, and energy have helped us build a strong and sustainable national economy. They have enabled us to build highways and electrical and communications networks. They have helped us develop clean energy technologies and create hundreds of thousands of jobs, both at home and abroad. And today, Canada is a world leader in mining. We have the capital, technology, and entrepreneurial expertise to support African nations as they grow. It is why we established the Canadian International Institute for Extractive Industries and Development. It is also why we support the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative. Our government has also identified 12 sub-Saharan African countries as priority markets under our Global Markets Action Plan. This is Canada's blueprint for creating jobs and economic growth through trade and investment. We have signed, we have signed concluded, or are negotiating foreign investment promotion and protection agreements known as VIVAS with 15 African countries. And Export and Development Canada will be opening its first African office in Johannesburg next year. Canada is working with Africa help the continent reach its full economic potential. And last year, our bilateral merchandise trade with Africa was more than $13 billion. That is a significant infusion of capital into the economy. Now we need to maximize the benefits of these solid trading relationships so they find those who need them most. The men and women without jobs. The children without an education pregnant mothers without access to medical care. They are the very people who would form the foundation of a strong economy 
if it were employed, educated, and healthy. That's why Canada is focusing so much on saving the lives of mothers and children. Matter learning born newborn and child health, known as NCH, is our top development priority. Thanks to the leadership of Prime Minister Harper and her the Muscota Initiative and subsequent global action, maternal mortality rates are declining and millions more children are celebrating their fifth birthday. And last May, during our MNCH summit, Prime Minister Stephen Harper announced $3.5 billion as Canada's new contribution to counter the preventable debt of mothers and children in developing countries. This is in part as a result of policies that work together to save lives. Policies that work together to create long-term, sustained economic growth. And I firmly believe that economic growth is the gateway to jobs, to health, and to a brighter future. <clears throat> it is ultimately the key to poverty reduction. It's a lesson for the kid, the Canada can work with the sector privy to make the progress of the objectives de développement, parce que vous connaissez vos entreprises, parce que vous avez des compétences techniques, parce que vous êtes présent sur le terrain et parce que vous lancez des initiatives concrètes. Pour un bon nombre d'entre vous ici, aujourd'hui, vous, que vous soyez conscient ou non, votre entreprise occupe une place de plus en plus importante dans le développement international. Nous savons qu'un secteur minier de distribution éthique a le pouvoir de transformer des pays. Nous savons qu'une croissance économique durable menée par le secteur privé a le pouvoir de réussir de la pauvreté. Et nous savons que le Canada et les entreprises canadiennes ont les connaissances requises pour jouer un grand rôle sur le continent africain. Les pays d'Afrique ont clairement exprimé leurs priorités et leurs besoins. Et le Canada dispose des capitaux, des technologies et des compétences entrepreneuriales nécessaires pour contribuer à la mise en œuvre de leur vision. That is why Canada works with the private sector to help advance our development objectives. Because you know your business. You have the technical expertise, the on-the-ground presence, and the concrete initiatives. For many of you here today, your business, whether you know it or not, is a growing part of international development. We know that a responsibly managed extractive sector has the potential to transform countries. We know that sustainable private sector-led economic growth can break the cycle of poverty. And we know that Canada and Canadian businesses have the know-how to lead on the African continent. African states have made their development needs and priorities clear. And Canada has the capital, technology, and entrepreneurial expertise to help them implement their vision. And that is why and wait for this one, but when you're going to like this one. That is why today I'm pleased to announce that our government is providing $309.3 million <coughs> to support the growth of small and medium-sized enterprise, enhance value chain, development, and expand wealth creation through the African Development Bank.
Canada is revamping its, develop its development program. We are working with more partners, looking at all options, promoting innovation, and breaking down those last persistent barriers to eliminating, to eliminating the global poverty. To reach those goals, Canada needs to diversify its domestic toolbox. We cannot rely on international funds for forward-looking approaches. We need our own innovative funding mechanisms. We need a Made in Canada development funding mechanism, one that supports private sector-led growth, that leads to sustainable solutions, and that creates jobs and wealth on both sides of the world. Indeed, as investors, Canadian businesses are models of best practice. They use innovative approaches, financial instruments and technologies to build a wealth capacity and create benefits for communities. Their presence is a positive for the countries, it's a positive for the countries in which they operate. And perhaps even more importantly, it is a positive for those who live there. I believe that our African development is benefit is benefiting from our governments, private sector companies, and academic institutions. We are helping countries transition from aid recipients to prosperous trading partners. Partners that are self-sustaining, that are masters of their own future, and that are able to provide for their citizens. The government of the country is the institution of the university of the development of the country. We are helping the country to pass the role of the partner of the development of the country, commerciaux, des partenaires autonomes, maîtres de leur avenir et capables de répondre aux besoins de la population. Le commerce comme le développement sont les clés de ce casse-tête complexe. Et le travail que nous faisons pour aider l'Afrique est un exemple concret des interactions entre le commerce et le développement. Et j'espère continuer à travailler avec vous, avec le Conseil canadien pour l'Afrique, afin que afin que nous puissions, le Canada, propulser l'Afrique, le Canada et l'Afrique dirige vers un avenir meilleur. So, ladies and gentlemen, I look forward to continuing to work with you and with the Canadian Council on Africa to move both Canada and Africa to a brighter future. Thank you very much.
founded by Peter Monk, a Torontonian, and now run by the board, because Mr. Monk is uh, just a character, and one of the lead directors, Ned Goodman, who's on the board of Barry Gold, is a great supporter of the Canadian Council, so we're in great hands with them. I told them that as well today. Uh, Orlando uh, from Nigeria, this uh, oil producer, extremely important sponsor, a believer in what we do, and a series of 30 sponsors. So let's give them a hand of applause. <laughs> Hours and hours and hours, and 
it's changing programs, it's, it's uh, rebuilding programs, and uh, you, know, you know how it is. And just, there's about five of them, there's four full time. La Conférence de Montréal is a great event, and I participate every year because they often talk about Africa. They have 15 permanent staff full time just for one activity, 15 permanent. And we have many activities with four permanent staff. So, it's, it's, so you can take Friday off and start Saturday on it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much, all of you, for participating, for thinking outside the box, for having a vision on Africa. And you know, together, we're going to make it work. Thank you very much.